Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Earlier this week on October 19th, Google unveiled the Pixel 6, which is a pretty exciting new phone for the Pixel line, but more importantly, made Android 12 officially available on all devices, including older Pixel phones, and of course, newer smartphones released by other manufacturers going forwards will be running on this latest edition of Android, which is called Material U, which of course has been out in the beta form for a couple of months now, but that was in the form of a developer preview and you had to kind of sideload it. Well, now that it's finally out here and the official version, let's take a closer look at sharing some of our impressions of using it, covering some of the new features and big changes compared to Android 11 from before. So immediately Material U, as we can see here, just has a very new interface style with all of the widgets as well as even the fonts just looking larger in terms of their overall size. It can be described as more cute, a little bit more cheeky, and Google likes to use emotion as the word. Functionality-wise, it's not necessarily anything radically different from what we had from before, but it's just a way of playing around more with these colors as well as with these icons that are just a bit more cartoon-like and tries to evoke a sense of being more fun when you're picking up the device and using it. Some animations, such as even tapping on the power key, you'll see it slowly fade out towards the edge until it disappears completely. Some of these finer touches, which are just showing a little bit more of attention to detail, one can argue that with versions of Android launchers made by other manufacturers and third parties, you could probably already have these functions found in other devices. Notably, one of the things that this kind of reminds me of, at least in the home screen with this oversized vertically stacked clock, is going to be admittedly some Sony Xperia phones from back in the day. So if you guys still remembered, Sony used to put all of these vertical style clocks on all of their Xperia phones, the icons just looking rounded and everything being a little bit more over size, in fact, is kind of reminiscent of what's going on here. And even the wallpaper here having a very subtle transition and colors being changed every time that you touched and interacted with the UI. But now instead of that being something from a third party, Google has made it official into the standard version of Android. So this is going to be the stock experience that's now found on all of these devices. Aside from that, we also see that in areas like the shades for the various icons, such as even the volume rocker, including long holding on the power key to bring up the additional controls. Everything just is a little bit larger in terms of their targets, but again, not a bad thing at all. In fact, it just feels a lot more fresh and having just more character, for lack of a better word, instead of all the straight lines and just smaller icons that we saw from before. Even the drag down notification shade also has this pill-like design for all of the icons. We can drag anywhere, by the way, to pull it completely down. And even the brightness slider takes on this form of this uh, large curved edges, which again, looks pretty attractive and neat. I found the overall fluidity of the UI to still be very good, at least on this Pixel 3. No real issues or drops in performance compared to Android 11 from before, which is certainly good. Now, the one thing that I'm not the biggest fan of, however, is the quick launch shortcut for Wi-Fi. I mentioned this because for some reason you can't tap on it once to turn the Wi-Fi on or off, but rather now if you tap on Wi-Fi, it will pop up another small screen that can then allow you to turn it on or choose between other networks. So even if you wanted to long hold for a few seconds, that will still just pop up the larger view. So if I wanted to just turn it on or off at a single click, that is actually no longer possible using stock Android 12, at least not at the moment. However, luckily the other commands such as for Wi-Fi, you can still turn it on or off with a single click. It's just, again, Wi-Fi for some reason is not the case. Shortcuts include an ultra dim mode that was not on there before that will make the display just a little bit dimmer, ensuring that you'll have a comfortable experience if you're using it in bed, for example, in really dark environments. Otherwise, another new function that is an integral part of Android 12 is continuing the privacy and security. So now you have the ability to either turn on or off the camera and the microphone. So in fact, if I turn these off, for example, block the camera and block the microphone, it will disable both of those hardware components. And now if I jump into the camera, you'll see that it's not able to actually see anything. It'll give you a reminder to say, do you want to unblock the camera? But if you tap on cancel, you can see that 
basically any application which is trying to use your camera or mic will not be able to do that. This is actually a pretty good move. However, if you have this function, let's say, turned on, you can still have a quick indication of seeing if you're using that sensor. If you jump into the camera now, for example, you'll see this green dot that's just reminding you in that corner that the camera is being activated. Of course, you can always download additional widgets, and here is one, by the way, for the Notes app, where you can more quickly launch into things like scribbling, as well as being able to record your voice, take an image, jump into a to-do list, and again, all of this is using these pretty funky looking shapes and edges, which just make it feel a bit more fun. Now, speaking of, we can take a look at this keyboard, which is the standard G board, but with Android 12, it has also been slightly changed. We see the kind of corners and edges being further rounded off, some of the accents just uh, look a little bit more vibrant, and overall, it still is very easy to type on, supporting swipe. There's also what they call as a Easter egg widget, which is baked into Android 12, which just gives you kind of a palette of all the different colors and shades, reinforces the fact that color as well is definitely an area where Android 12 is uh, pushing at the forefront and trying to play around with a lot more. A big part of that is because if you jump into wallpapers, a function that is found in Android 12 is it can intelligently switch all the different icons and themes. In this example, we have a stock pink colored wallpaper from a Pixel phone and as a result it's actually detected that the dominant color from this wallpaper is this pinkish shade and hence it's trying to calibrate the entire tone of all the colors that the screen is displaying to be a little bit softer closer match to how the pink of the background looks so if we try and change the wallpaper again for example into something else which has different shades let's try blue for instance what happens now is the screen also has more of a colder tint to it because it's detected that the prominent color is is blue. But of course, if you don't like this level of intelligent switching, you can still go into the basic colors and default the kind of whites to be more of a pure white or change even everything to be a sharper green, for example. All of this can be completely tweaked per your liking. Now we also have themed icons, which is basically what we have right now, since uh, we have a dark mode activated and with the kind of blue background, you can see how all the icons have also turned dark with a bluish shade underneath. But uh, this might be not something that everyone prefers, Plus, you know, some of the icons which are not direct or official from Google can still break that pattern and have splashes of colors. So if you want to go back to kind of the regular icons and remove the theme, you can also turn this off and that will return you to kind of the standard view. Now, if we jump into settings, the overall theme continues with every letter and icon just seeming a little bit larger, the targets easier to hit, uh, which is in this way echoing what we saw from Samsung's One UI as well uh, in terms of its layout, but everything does look pretty attractive and clean. To find one of the additional Easter eggs, that is for Android 12, if you long hold for a few seconds, tap on it, it will bring up this clock. These days, Google is naming their newer operating systems just by a number compared to in the early days where the names could have been inspired by food items like Android Eclair or Honeycomb back in the early days, but now it's just 12. And 12 is a number that can be just like an hour in the day. So with this, we can actually turn the clock hand here to 12. And what happens there is it jumps into this number and just shows you a few more splashes of color. So again, that's just an Easter egg. Whenever you're upgrading from an old device, you typically will see a day or two's time where your phone has to do reorganize all of the files and software. And so for the first day when you upgrade, it definitely will take up a little bit more of extra juice or battery for things to then recalibrate. And then by the time that you are using the phone, let's say three days later, it shouldn't be a case where you see much of a difference in terms of optimization or battery. In fact, Android 12 claims to be even more efficient than Android 11. Continuing with the theme of privacy, under settings, there's also this new privacy dashboard, which you can find that is intelligently populated with how much time you've been using your microphone and camera. Just gives you more granular level of control as well as the ability to monitor what's going on behind the scene. Now, I will also mention that the standard utility tools, although functionality is again pretty similar, has also seen a more consistent UI update as well. So the calculator, for example, now looks like this to match. It has all of these rounded corners with this kind of pastel style looking color shade. Overall, I do like it. I think it looks pretty neat and uh, cute, clean looking. And then we can also, let's say, flip the orientation to take a look at some additional options there. 
looking quite good. And we can also check out, let's say, the clock itself. And uh, not too much changes here, but again, all of the icons and buttons just look a little bit larger. And although you'll still see moments of uh, some older versions of the OS creep in, but for the most part, it is quite good, at least on all of the default utility tools. And now right from the home screen, we can also tap on the icon, the home button, to bring up other smart connected products. We can even flip our screen orientation if you want to and uh, still interact with your phone. As more and more devices these days have larger screen sizes and even desktop modes, it makes sense that this can now be activated a little bit more easily. And you can even connect to a keyboard or mouse to do some productivity. The widgets, of course, also dynamically changing their shape depending on what orientation that you are using your device in. So that's more or less it as far as our just uh, first impressions, closer look at Android 12, the official commercial edition. Like I said, in terms of functionality, Android is already very mature and competitive. So it's been a while, the software has already adopted you know, gestures for a few generations, everything in terms of utility tools. There's not too much that has been significantly changed, but more than anything, Material U, Android 12 just gives us a new personalized UI experience, primarily with its colors, its launchers, and all the icons that just are a little softer, a little rounder, and perhaps from a functionality perspective, really the new big things here are still the improvements to privacy. And overall, I have to say I do like it quite a lot. I think it's fun, attractive, and so far I am definitely enjoying it. But feel free to let us know in the comments below your thoughts on Android 12. Will you be upgrading if it is available for your device? Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you like Android 11 better? Feel free to let us know. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. It's been our closer look at Android 12 here in the initial days with the official public release 